morning. By living the gospel message, our family life says much more than the words we use about the gospel. Before we begin, let's take a few moments to silently pray that our actions speak louder than our words. Glory to the newborn King, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. This beautiful morning allows us once again to celebrate the gift of our Savior in the context of his holy family. Let us prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, he is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised up in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they, blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. Blessed are they, blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of my soul yearns in the pines of the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Blessed are they, blessed are they who dwell in Happy they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. Happy the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. Blessed are they, blessed are they who dwell in your house. O Lord of hosts, hear our prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. Blessed are they, blessed are they who dwell in
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in words or in deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Each year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, and when he was 12 years old they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, may all of you continue to enjoy these uh, wonderful days within the octave of Christmas. Uh, sometimes the busyness before Christmas is a wonderful way of reminding us that uh, there's uh, peace and calm that comes with the celebration of the Feast of the Holy Family. You know, maybe you've heard this before, but uh, 
Being a member of a family is a lot like playing with silly putty. Have you heard that before? No? Okay. Well, you know how silly putty works, huh? Maybe you don't. That's probably an old, old toy, huh? I don't know. Some of us remember. Well, it's always the same material, but it has different properties, depending on how you handle it. If you pull on it sharply, it snaps apart. If you hit it with a hammer, it smashes into tiny pieces. If you treat it gently, pulling carefully, it will stretch and stretch. You can smooth it out and it will pick up pictures from the comics. Or you can roll it into a ball and it will bounce from place to place. Families are a lot like that. If you pull them too hard, they can break. If you hit them as if you want to destroy them, sometimes they can't take the pressure and they smash into a thousand pieces. But if you treat them with care and gentleness, they can take a lot of abuse, stretching and bouncing and being pushed around. What happens during all of that time of uh, bouncing and stretching and being pushed around? Well, that's when we might begin to recognize that all good ultimately comes from God above. It may be within the context of the family that we find ourselves gradually being encouraged to accept our individual limitations, our imperfections, even our illnesses and sinfulness, That uh, pushing and bouncing has the potential for members of a family to open their eyes, to open their eyes to the value of life in general and the worth and beauty of others. Maybe in the family we become better able to oppose pride and arrogance and vanity that can make us too centered upon ourselves and our own needs. The family is capable of helping us to be brought closer to the cross of Jesus Christ, the true sign of self-sacrifice and love. It is there where we learn to not put down or denounce others but to rejoice in their accomplishments and to be happy with them. We can uh, grow in an authentic basis for our prayer life that will guide us to a closer daily relationship with God in the family. Everyone agrees. You can hear that right there. (laughs) In the family, we are able to develop a healthy conscience with a more balanced understanding of good and evil. 
It is within the context of that family life that we can uh, grow in genuine love for others and recognize and respond to their needs. Jesus went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother kept all of these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. What a gift. Our family. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the family of all angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We present our prayers before God today. <coughs> For Pope Francis, may the Lord inspire him in his ministry of love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders may have the courage to uphold the dignity and sanctity of life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this faith community, may the Holy Spirit nurture and strengthen families and grace them with spiritual support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are elderly, in poor health, or lonely, may receive comfort from God as we, their family, attend to their earthly needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who have gone before us, especially Edward and Catherine Campion, may they enter the eternal kingdom of God who created them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and ever-living God, grant a favorable hearing to all of our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord, for through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered us covenants, and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, 
Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known, to all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints, there with the whole of creation freed from the corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our God has appeared on the earth and lived among us.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks to Jan Rice for taking our traveling chalice this week. And again, it's our prayers for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Know that you're all welcome to participate in this particular vocation program, simply calling our parish office. This week is a little change. I will be going to celebrate a funeral for a longtime friend of mine, an Irish nun who died last week at the age of 98 <laughs> in San Antonio. And so I'll be heading out early tomorrow, and Tom Beer has been good enough to take me to the airport. And uh, I'll be back on Thursday, and then we'll have Mass Friday morning. And then, for the last year and a half, my cousin has been planning to get married. And they're finally thinking it's going to happen on New Year's Day. I'll be heading up to La Crosse then on uh, Friday morning. Father Bill Nolan, you'll be happy to know, will be coming to be here next weekend. And so after that, I'm thinking of planning a six-day bicycle race. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all come together. We hope that uh, well, the journey is, is safe and that. And thanks for your prayers for uh, Sister Veronica Dobson, she was born outside of Dublin 98 years ago, spent 70 years here, and actually was principal at OLA School in Beloit and St. Thomas School in Beloit, and then worked at Holy Name Seminary, founded the Irish Pastoral Center in Boston for 17 years, and then decided to retire and teach people from Burma English and you'll find them still speaking with an Irish brogue in San Antonio. <laughs> but God bless all of you. Have a wonderful week ahead again, Ben. There will be no masses here this week except on Friday morning and then uh, the regular mass schedule uh, for the weekend, except on Saturday. You'll notice in our schedule for New Year's Day there will be just the one Mass in the morning, and uh, we wish you all a very blessed and happy new year. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And a special blessing, too. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of the Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity, so that, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.